Hello everyone. Doing a new project. This one is for measuring and uh, adjusting the pH in the uh, greenhouse uh, reservoir uh, where we have the uh, hydroponics. Uh, this is a uh, this particular project has the ability to monitor the pH and adjust accordingly. So it'll uh, read the pH if it's uh, let's say it's above uh, 5.5, so that means that it uh, has, let's say, a 6 uh, pH, and we want it to be 5.5. It'll introduce a little bit of uh, acid in order to bring that pH down to 5.5 where it's supposed to be. So made the entire circuit and everything. Uh, just uh, recently purchased the pumps, the paralytic, par par whatever it's called, uh, pumps, dosing pumps, and the pH... Uh, meter that uh, measures the analog measures the uh, pH in millivolts uh, in analog, and then you have to convert that over to pH, which I'll show you in the code here in just a second. So let me show you what we have here. This right here, disregard this here. This is a different project, but uh, this right here is one of those pumps, and it runs on 12 volts. And this right here is going to be filling up the water glass. And this is the source, of course. So this is kind of simulating uh, the uh, acid in this case. Um, and this right here is the little uh, analog measuring uh, pH device. And if I scroll over a bit, oh, just saw a little bit of acid in this case uh, drop over in the glass. Here's the actual pump that did that, uh, 12 volts. Here's the little circuit I made last night. Get you a little bit better view of that. Uh, this guy right here is a part of the analog uh, pH meter. Uh, pretty nice design, really, and it wasn't all that expensive. But uh, runs on a 12-volt uh, power source, which comes into here. And then I take a... Uh, uh, 78, 7805 uh, voltage regulator and knock that down to 5 volts for the DigiSup Oak that's underneath here, um, which is hard to show you with all the wires, so I'll show you what one looks like because I have a bunch of them. And this right here is an Oak, if you've never seen one. They're quite handy. They have built-on Wi-Fi. Oh, there went again. And uh, they're quite nice. You program them uh, over the cloud using particle.io. And uh, quite nice little interface. So let me show you. I have a couple different buttons on here. This is to prime the pumps, and this is this is for acid. This is for base. Two different pumps. And I'll show you by hitting the button here. You can see how it puts in all kinds of liquid. Quite nice. How fast it runs, really. I could probably uh, put it on a uh, pulse width mod mod modulation uh, signal and decrease the amount of signal going to the motor so that way it uh, does less, but I'm doing it in terms of time. So I'm running this at the moment for a total of one second. So if the pH is off, let's say it's up to six and I want it down to 5.5, it'll run for one second, put in just a little bit of acid to knock it down, then it'll measure for the next minute and if the pH is still too high, it'll go ahead and, and distribute another dose or another second worth of acid. So that way there's not too much going in at any one time. It has time to measure the effects. Uh, the reservoir we have is uh, 27, 24 gallons. And uh, so it'll take time for the pump to distribute everything through the, the system. Um, so this should work rather well. I may have to adjust the time accordingly, but we'll see. Over time, uh, we'll, we'll know more. But not too bad so far. And of course, this one's for the base if we wanted to make it go. But of course, I don't have it hooked up to anything, uh, no liquid or anything at the moment, but you get the idea. So let's show you some of the things here. So this right here is the analog pH meter kit. Comes with the controller here that plugs into any Adreno. I just happen to have it plugged into the Oak at the moment. And 
this, this is the cord it uses to plug in. A uh, nice little barrel connector to go to the actual meter itself. It seems to work really well. I calibrated it with some, um, what is that called? Uh, it's a solution that you use that makes the, the liquid, the water, exactly four point whatever uh, pH. And uh, with that, you're able to calibrate the solution or calibrate the, the meter with that. So use that. And I also have another, I can show you this real fast. I have another guy that I use. This is the one I manually check the pH with right now, so I won't need this so much in the future. Probably use it uh, just to make sure that this one is still on its game. But other than that, won't have to use that so much in the future. All right. Oops, that's the code. Okay. So anyway, that's the meter. Uh, not too bad as far as price goes. Uh, Thirty-five bucks. Ended up paying, so not too bad. Could have been worse. This right here is the dosing pump. Uh, parastolic? Parastolic, yeah, there we go. I knew I could say that word. Anyway, uh, 12 volt seems to work like a champ. I haven't had any problems with it so far in my testing, so pretty happy about that. And that one was like 12 bucks and, and uh, ended up buying two of those, one for the acid, one for the base. So not too bad. And Here is the code. So we run this through here. So here's the, the current pH level. This is the variable that's handling that. Uh, that's the pin for the pump motor itself for the acid. And this is the one for the base. And this is, the, of course, the pins on the oak. Um, this is just a little indicator that the pump is either running or it's not. And that gets relayed over to the particle.io. And then I can. Uh, pull that information and see how much it's running per hour, per day, whatever. Uh, LED for the oak, uh, perfect pH. So based on what I'm growing, which is mostly tomatoes, cucumbers, things like that, it usually requires a pH around 5.5. That's about the perfect pH for what I'm growing. The If I was growing onions or radishes or anything else, I'm going to need a more acidic, so less of a number here. Uh, if I was growing anything else, it would probably need more of a of a pH, uh, so uh, less acidic. So uh, this is adjustable, of course, thanks to the being able to update this on the uh, in the cloud. I can go ahead and just uh, push this code at any moment with minor tweaks, and it'll just take up the new uh, configuration and go with it. So it's quite nice. Uh, this right here is a nice little buffer, so it won't actually do anything. So it's taking readings for an entire minute, right? And during that minute, every second is taking another reading. If at any time the end result ends up being, let's say, 5.5, it won't do anything. 5.6, it won't do anything. 5.7, it won't do anything. 5.8, okay, now we got an issue. It's past the pH, the perfect pH with the buffer. So now it'll go ahead and introduce just a couple of drops, one second worth of acid into the system. And that will hopefully knock it back down into the 5.5 range. If it ends up uh, in practice knocking it down too far, so let's say it goes, instead of uh, 5.8, it goes down to, let's say, 5.2, then in which case the base will have to kick up a little bit, uh, one second worth of, of drops in order to balance it out. So I'm hoping that won't be the case. I'm hoping this is enough of a buffer to where it'll keep it right around 5.5 without having to do anything. But we'll see. We'll have to monitor it uh, for probably a good week to determine if everything's working perfectly or if any of these numbers need to be adjusted. Uh, the wait for drips. This is the variable. It starts out at 60, and then every time it resets, it resets back to 60. That's what this one's for. And what it's doing is, is it's every second it iterates through the main loop. And every time it iterates through this loop, it counts down from that set number. So it starts at 60, 59, 58, 57, goes all the way down to zero. Once it reaches zero, that's when it actually actually uh, distributes uh, whatever it's going to distribute, the acid or the base. And uh, so therefore, it's not running all the time. The pump's not going every second. It'll only go once a minute in this case. So this is also adjustable. It may need to be every 30 seconds. It may need to be every 10 minutes. Who knows? Uh, but this is a good starting point. Um, acid run pin. This is when uh, you push the, the priming buttons. That's what those pins are for. And motor runtime. This is how long the motor is actually going to run 
when it's uh, dispersing the acid or the base. So right now I just have it at a second. Uh, variables for doing the particle.io so I can I can monitor these variables remotely. And here's your main loop. So this is where it runs for the second, either uh, acid or base, depending on if it's needed, of course, with the buffer and everything. And then this here is just for the uh, whether you're hitting the prime buttons or not. But so far, that's looking pretty good based on my limited testing. And show you a little bit more of a close up of the this guy itself. So, uh, right pump is the base pump. This right here is the acid. Uh, it seems how acid is lower pH. I went ahead and put it onto the left, and then higher pH onto the right is base. So, priming button here, priming button here for the base for the acid. Uh, little 10k resistors to uh, pull down the uh, signal going to these buttons. Uh, this is 12 volts coming into here, and then that immediately goes, it either distributes out to here to run the pumps, or it comes up to here to distribute power to the oak. Uh, the oak wants, it can actually handle up to 12 volts, but because of the uh, little bitty tiny uh, regulator on the board that I don't want to break um, or go over for any reason, I go ahead and uh, use this little beefier regulator so we don't have any problems. So it knocks it down to 5 volts going to the oak, so we don't have any problems there. And if there, of course, is any spikes or anything weird going on, the oak should be able to handle it in theory. So, and then there is, see if we can get the oak here. Here we go right here. And I got a little LED that lights up when the pumps are on. But it's a nice little, yeah, just lit up. Uh, nice little device. I like this oak very much. I got quite a few of them now. Uh, this right here is the analog pin, uh, 5 volt power and ground going to this guy right here, which is doing the, the leg work for the, the pH meter. Uh, pretty simple design, really. Um, oh, and I'm using some uh, PN2222 uh, transistors to turn on and off the power going to the, the pumps themselves. So instead of using relays, I'm using these transistors. Uh, seems like a, a decent way to, to make the power work with the oak. Um, I think that's about it for this. I'm going to uh, print an enclosure, probably hot glue the crap out of this so it, no moisture gets into it because it's going to be in a fairly humid environment. And uh, we should be good to go. I don't, I don't uh, foresee any issues. The... Um, the enclosure I make is going to have to be fairly airtight, and then of course have these little tubes coming out of it. Uh, I'll have to figure out something, something to make it really airtight. Maybe just hot glue the crap out of it, which I love hot glue. That stuff works like a champ. But uh, I'll figure that out and maybe show you a video of that in the future. Going to redo the whole greenhouse to um, accommodate four more hydroponic. Uh, Dutch buckets, and uh, the pump I have is already more than adequate to take care of all that load. Um, what else do I have to do? Do a little bit of plumbing in there to uh, bring the water over to the other side where the new Dutch buckets are going to be. Um, I think that's about it. Pretty much got to clean out what I have. All the cucumbers and tomato plants have pretty much run their course. They're the cucumber plants that we uh, grew, I mean, they, I don't know, probably grew. Well, more than a dozen cucumbers, big ones. I mean, like big cucumbers. They were quite good. Uh, but the, as it started getting older, the outside of the cucumber, the uh, pith part, uh, started getting more and more bitter. So I'm going to throw that whole thing away. And, uh, and instead of doing the big uh, tomatoes, which we had some huge tomatoes, we probably had uh, about, uh, yeah, that big, big tomatoes, uh, beautiful ones. And they actually tasted very, very good, especially if we let them uh, vine ripen. Very, very sweet. Uh, but uh, we're going to go on most of them, on most of the Dutch buckets, we're going to go with uh, cherry tomatoes or grape uh, tomatoes and see how well those work. Um, also, on the other side, we're going to do uh, butter lettuce and see how well that works out. But anyway, lots of fun. I, I like being able to incorporate uh, electronics, hydroponics, gardening, and uh, 3D printing all at one time. 
So I'll keep you posted.